exactly 40 years ago to the day of making this video. So Christmas Day, 1984. I was quite possibly the happiest person alive at that time. And that was because I'd unboxed this, my ZX Spectrum. And this is the very same Spectrum. And here it is, looking a bit rough around the edges, but I think that just adds to its charm. But not only did I get my Spectrum, but I also got this. If I move that out of the way, this is an interface too. And what this did was it added two joystick parts onto the Spectrum, because as we all probably know, those Sinclair Spectrums didn't natively come with joystick parts. But... There was another feature of this, and this is what this video is about. And this is the part under here. And this is the ROM part. And this is something that I have never used. But today, I'm going to use it, hopefully, for its very first time in 40 years. Now, what did the ROM part do? Well, there was a series of games that came out initially for it. I think 10 in total, and it never really took off though. And that was really because A, you needed another piece of hardware to play the games, and also because there was a price increase. This was for the ROM games, so around £15, which compared to paying five, six, seven, eight pounds, maybe up to £10 for one of the top premium games. It just wasn't budget friendly for an 11 year old buying software. So hence, I always end up with tape and this never got used, which is a shame. Now, looking on eBay, they do crop up from time to time, but they are really, really expensive. As you can probably imagine, scarcity increased price, doesn't it? And I don't have the budget for buying the original ROM cards for it. So what I'm going to do is get this connected up to the Spectrum in a bit, but first of all, I need to build myself a ROM cartridge, which is what I'm going to do now. And this is probably going to be one of the simplest and easiest builds, fingers crossed. So building the ROM cartridge, there really isn't much that's needed. I've got uh, a 27C512 EEPROM. Uh, I've got a socket for it to go in, just so I can make it easily swap in and out if I want to reprogram it, rather than soldering it in, and then I'm stuck with whatever's on it. Uh, we've got a, a Logic chip um, and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And I've also gone for some pin headers so we can select which ROM uh, we want currently to be used by the Spectrum. And I've got some jumpers there to go on there. Uh, ideally, you probably want to just use uh, a two position inline switch, uh, two of those up at the top to select the separate banks. Um, but I don't have any of those switches, so I've just gone and I'm gonna be using these, uh, these pin headers, which should work fine, albeit it'll be a little bit more cumbersome to do. And of course, we're going to need a PCB. And where else would you want to go and get your PCBs from other than PCBWay? Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you want to follow me along with this project, I will put the link on there. The files and everything that you need is, is all on the PCBWay Projects webpage. With PCBs from as little as $5 for five boards and super fast shipping become highly recommended. But they're not limited to just PCBs. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, and sheet metal fabrication. So do check them out. There is a link in the description and hopefully you can follow along the project with me and have a go yourself.
So that's the ROM assembled. All I've got to do now is program the EEPROM. And for this, I'll be using the XGECU software. I've already downloaded the ROM images. I've not included a link because they are subject to copyright, but I'm sure a quick Google will help you find those. Um, this is a 64K ROM and it will hold four 16K images. So here I'm just loading in the different ROM images into the software. If you're not too sure on using the software, I did a recent video on using this uh, Xgecu programmer. So do have a look at that. But you'll notice that as I go along here and select each ROM, I'm choosing the uh, default address where the RAM, uh, the ROM image is loaded in. So I'm changing that from all zeros at the beginning, then up uh, next ROM image at 4,000, then the third ROM image at 8,000, and the final ROM image at uh, zero C uh, treble zero which uh, remembering to change the default setting to not clear the uh, buffer because otherwise if you don't change that every time you load in a fresh image it will reset it and everything else you've put in there will be gone so remember to change that and as we put this final ROM image on it'll just be a case of then burning it onto the EEPROM. So that's all the images, all four images ready to go on and just checking that stuff is definitely there and then just click on the program button and bingo and it writes it pretty quickly really. And then I've got to set to do a quick verify after it's complete, which it will go on and tell us shortly that everything's completed satisfactorily. So with that all done, the only thing we've got left to do is fit the EEPROM into the socket. Uh, just remembering to uh, line it up accordingly. Notch on the chip with notch on the PCB stroke socket. There, got there in the end. All it's time to do now is put it into the interface two. Right, moment of truth. First time in 40 years using this socket. Power's off, it's disconnected. And should just slot in. Which it does. Right, let's connect up the power. And there it is, working. The ROM socket on an Interface 2, never been used in 40 years, and bingo. Let's have a quick game of Jetpack. Hello. That's working perfectly. Right, let's just try, we're not here to play Jetpack, are we? Let's just try changing the last pin, see if we can get a different image loaded in. So like I say, it'd be better with a switch, but we can do this without too much trouble, hopefully. So let's just move that one across. Right, so let's try that. You 
That does seem to be lurking. Oh, keys. Spare center, seven X. Right. Let's give it a quick go. Oh, Fifteen pounds for this, eh? I'm not so sure. Okay. But it is working. And I'm sure on that basis that all the other RAM images will be working as well. So I've gone on and checked and no surprise, all four RAM images work absolutely perfectly. And it was such a simple and easy build to do, I've even knocked up a second one. And I will get those EEPROM windows covered over at some point with a sticker once I get some made up. Is this a practical way of loading games on a Spectrum in this day and age? No. And it wasn't back then either, really. But it's a lot of fun. And I would never have thought that 40 years on from that Christmas day in 1984 that I'd finally get to be using that ROM part. So I hope you found it fun and entertaining, and I hope it brought back some happy Christmas memories with your computers too. I'll bid you a farewell and a Merry Christmas, and I hope I will see you in the new year. Bye for now.